Welcome to the Why Not Podcast with me, Chrissy Hawkins. In a world where everybody asks you why, I'm here to ask why not. So sit back and relax or walk and listen and join me on this journey as we try to answer this never-ending question. What makes people say why not? Hey guys, welcome back to Why Not. We are going to talk about the five things that are stopping you from keeping motivated when in the gym. I think these are all very, very common and I think you might get a lot of aha moments from it. I hope you do anyway. I hope you enjoy. This is also recorded in the gym versus in my bedroom. So if it's a little bit echoey, I'm sorry, but I hope you enjoyed either way. Hello. So, welcome back to Why Not. Um, I'm hoping the sound is okay here today because I'm actually recording in the gym and it's a lot more open than my room, so I'm hoping there isn't too much echo, but if the sound is a bit funky, that is my reason and I am sticking to it. So, what are we talking about today? Life. Thoughts. The world. I'm joking. Now, today we are going to talk about five reasons that you cannot stay motivated when, when it comes to training and um you know we're, we're hitting mid no sorry we're hitting april oh god it's april at the end of the week um <laughs> and you know easter's coming up some people might be gone you know the diehards are still training away and if you're at that point now where you're kind of like uh, bored um, and then you'll disappear and you'll come back because you have two weeks to your holiday or something like that. These are the reasons that I think that I see why people struggle with, say, motivation, um, that word, and keeping going. And look, we all have lulls where we don't want to do it. Uh, that's everybody, myself included. But you do see a lot of people who go gung-ho for January, disappear, come back in, you know, May maybe, disappear, come back in September, disappear, and they never get to where they want to go, um, or they just, you know, I don't know, we, I see, I've seen it in all the gyms, so that's why um, I just wanted to kind of have a podcast or an episode about that today. So I have five reasons here what I think. Um, so I'm going to start off now with our first reason and the first reason I think this is happening to people is you're doing it because you think you should versus that you actually want. So I see this with all types of exercise, you know, people going to the gym, doing things uh, because they think that's what they should be doing. And um, like, for example, you see a lot of people who run and a lot of people may run because it's cheaper than going to the gym or whatever other reasons and I do find a lot of the time people kind of associate cardio with weight loss so they think if they run they'll lose weight but they don't actually like running so they just do it for a while and then they stop and then they start again you know um, and you see it with gym classes and you see when people join the gym as well they come in and they do the couple of cardio machines and you know they do that for half an hour or an hour and they do it for like a month or so and because they don't actually want to be doing it they're just doing it because they think they need it for weight loss after a month it gets very repetitive and very very boring and that's why you stop like if you don't enjoy doing something it's very very hard to keep doing it no matter like okay fair enough say for instance you may not like your job but you keep doing it but there's a means to an end there you're always going to get money you're always getting a payoff for want of a better description on it whereas you may not be feeling you're getting the same payoff for going in and going to the gym so like why would you keep going and on top of that as well it's it's hard when you know like say for instance if you want to look a certain way you might be going the whole wrong way about doing it but you don't know that because you know obviously not being a trainer and not having a background in it you kind of go for what you know which tends to be the cardio machines or if you join a gym you get given you know a warm-up on the cardio this that and the other a few fixed weights and off you go um and that probably isn't going to give you the desired result that you're looking for so when you don't see that result 
it's very hard to keep going. Um, and that's another one that I, it's actually number two on my list here is you're not getting the results that you want. Uh, this often happens because, as I said there, like you know, you're doing this standard program you were given at the start by the gym, and you know, as I said before, people would think cardio for weight loss, but now there is a lot more focus on strength training and weight training and yes if you do cardio you will obviously be expending more energy which means that you're going to you know if you're doing more cardio or doing more exercise than you were beforehand you will see a weight loss drop but if you're looking for that kind of toned um, athletic look you're not going to get that from cardio you need to be doing weights and you need to be doing them with a structure, um, not doing a few fixed weights three times a week. And I find that when people don't get the result they want, because again, you know, yeah, thanks to social media and not even social media, the media in general, but social media has amplified it with all the shite they sell. You can feel like you're supposed to have this result in a couple of weeks um, because bikini model A, says their program will get you that in six weeks when they leave out the fact that maybe bikini model a has been training for uh 10 years before they did their program and all these other things that we don't know that they're doing and when we don't get that result we think there's something wrong with us but the problem is a lot of the people who are selling things are either well there's photoshopping involved as well but a lot of these people they've been training for years and then they're using that to put sell their program which is totally fine like you know you are in a sense your calling card um just because you are a certain weight or a certain aesthetic look doesn't mean you're incredibly healthy be people associate leanness with healthy but we don't know what like you know maybe eating disorder or other problems that could be going on behind the the looks of the sales pitch and so because we associate that we look at this and we want to look like that and they're telling you you can do that in six weeks but they didn't even do that in six weeks so you're not having a realistic timeline on on this so obviously if you don't get the way you think you should look in the six weeks it's very hard to keep motivated to keep going because you're like well what's the point when you might be actually skipping over all the other subtle changes that happen, you could be, you know, you could be finding that your clothes are looser. If you took pictures, you might see that they're you're leaner in certain places, or you've more muscle, which is the look that we're kind of maybe looking for. Or, you know, you might find that silly things like walking up the stairs, you're not gassed. People like take all these things for granted, forgetting like that that's just as important as being a size eight or whatever, you know. I can't remember who said it before, but like, it's a really interesting point that, you know, people say like, you don't, everyone frets over the size that they are, but like, nobody can look at someone and go, well, they're a size eight. Um, even like weight wise, I've had multiple people, I said before, guess what I weigh and I generally weigh about 10 kilos more than they think. So I think if we obsess over weight, it's not really going to do us any help. Um, so, you know, if you may not get the results that you want there are like two things that you need to do one look at what you're um doing in order to do that is that exactly what you need to get to where you want to be so like is the plan you are doing like actually going to give you the results you want because if you want to be lean and muscular running isn't going to do that for you um if you want to be able to run a marathon you're probably going to have to run um, you know, it's 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 that kind of thing. So first off, look at that plan, and secondly, maybe adjust your timeline. Have you realistically given yourself enough time to get to the point that you are desperately looking for? Because if not, you need to be patient and set that time a little bit longer. On to number three here, and this is something I think people don't think about either: is that sometimes life just happens. Like if you are mad busy or, you know, something's going on in the family or, you know, it could be work, it could be illness, it could be all manner of different things. Last thing you want to do is go to the gym or work out. And that's completely normal. Like, you know, it's like you can't expect, like you mightn't be sleeping, you mightn't get time to eat properly, you might be stressed to the nines. 
and then you're trying to do the gym on top sometimes in that situation it's actually better for you to take the break and come back to it when you are ready instead of trying to force yourself to keep going when it's probably going to actually do more damage than it's good because not only will you probably not most likely won't be getting the results you want you're going to build that negative association with the gym so or a training or whatever you're doing so if you have that kind of situation going on take that step back take a breather let yourself have the time to get through that period because we do have tough times in our life and sometimes the best thing we can do is you know if you need a bit of a stress relief yeah go but don't feel like you're a failure if you don't go or you know maybe someday you might need to just get out for a walk and maybe someday you might just need to hide under a blanket and cry you know it's all of these are completely normal and completely fine and i think we need to give ourselves permission when life gets tough to actually give ourselves the space and time to look after ourselves in a way that works for you for me sometimes training helps me relieve stress for other ones sometimes a bucket of ice cream does you know it's it's a case of do what works for you and don't force yourself into doing things again just because you think you should be so coming kind of back to point one doing it because you think you should if your life is all over the place maybe the best thing you can do right now is take a break and you can come back to it when you're in a better place and when you're ready to take it on the way you want to take it on so that one i think is really important to remember because i do think people forget when things happen that it's not always your fault and it doesn't make you a bad person for not uh being able to train for a certain amount of time because something was going on in your life number four now is not knowing why you're doing it okay so i suppose the best example on this is if you see anyone who is getting married uh there is nothing more laser focused than a bride with a wedding coming up she will make every training session do double training sessions you know you see it a lot with people holidays as well often with holidays they leave it too late maybe weddings because you know you've got a year lead up people get on that a bit quicker and they see the results because of it and whereas with holidays people might do a crash diet and then destroy themselves on holiday as in i don't mean like all their progress i mean you know eat everything around them and destroy their body no uh, i'm trying to say this not in a way that like oh you do so good for six weeks and then you just reverse it all it's more you go so extreme that you just want to extremely go the other way something along those lines is what i'm trying to say and anyway you come back then after and or after the wedding or whatever uh, or after whatever event that you've been training for and you're like oh why do i do this now i've no reason to do this like say for instance me i I always say I dislike running. Um, I've signed up for half marathons, all the way up to the half marathon, perfect training. Not perfect training, but you know, I'm really, really good at training for it. As soon as it's over, I'm like, oh, because I don't actually like doing it. So why am I running now? Oh, just to run. But I don't actually want to run. So why would I keep running? Um, so it's great when you have something to look forward to, in a sense that you have something to keep you focused this could be the same when it comes to training like I find I go through lulls of training where I'm not pushing myself the way I want to because I'm just I don't I'm not training for anything other than myself so you know every so often I just have to give myself a kick up the arse and say right you have to actually do something here stop being an idiot you're well able for this and then I get back into the routine of it and as i said this is kind of the same when it comes to training so like that if your holiday's over and you're like oh i've nothing now to train for you need to find even mini reasons or like maybe have another little event or even i suppose i don't really like the idea of training for events but like kind of going well what little goals can you set maybe can we change it away from the event so your wedding's done now what can you do maybe you want to get really good at lifting something or you know do a push-up or you know whatever you can do to kind of keep yourself motivated not motivated but keep yourself on that line to keep yourself consistent um because as i said consistency is always more important than motivation because motiva- motivation comes and goes like the buses and if your motivation's anything like bu- dublin bus you never know how when they're going to come um 
but if you are consistent and it's become a habit you'll still show up on the days you don't want to more often than not and these are the really really important things we need to think about so why are you doing like if you can't answer more than I want to lose weight you probably need to get another reason do you know what I mean like you're not going to stick with it if you want to do it because it makes you feel good that's more reason to keep it going if you want to do it because it makes your quality of life better in ways that you didn't realize until you started training that can keep you going um so these things like you know one-off events are going to make it hard to keep going when the one-off events are are, are gone and again we are tying that like you know negative training where you just have to go gung-ho for this one thing and then you're done with it like do you know what i mean it's it's that negative of i have this event so i have to kill myself to this event and then i don't have to do it again but like you don't have to kill yourself ever <laughs> um you can do stuff at a pace you enjoy and just keep active and it's almost like as i said like with your health and stuff like that there isn't an end date so you're always going to have your body and you always want to keep it in the best shape you can so by associating it with this end date it kind of doesn't take into the actual whole how do i say this basically bigger picture like you're laser focused on one thing but you will still have your body after so why not try and continue to keep it in the best shape possible so it feels good and you feel good and you feel very strong and capable that's what i'm trying to say here um i hope that makes sense because as i said like i just find it hard when we have these end dates it's just like yeah done okay cool i'm finished now but it shouldn't be like that and it should be something that you're constantly doing and again this is totally it's not like just me saying it it's a case of we it's what we need <laughs> you know what we need for our body keep our body in the same as in as good a condition as we can obviously things get in the way sometimes but you know if you're looking at it as that you're more likely to keep going as a just a means to an end of a wedding or an event and we are on to number five why am i singing i don't know uh <laughs> i got really flat when is it that anyway number five is not having a plan and this goes back to earlier not knowing why you're doing it and maybe not doing the right exercise for what the results you want but if you're constantly coming into a gym and you are coming in and going i don't know what i'm doing today hmm i'll go on the treadmill and i'll do a few benches and i'll do this and do you see what i mean like that i'm already bored <laughs> and obviously if you don't have a plan like a programs run off structures normally do similar things for s for a certain amount of weeks to help build up what we're trying to work on and at the end of those six weeks you'll move something else maybe these are things that happen but if you're coming in and flitting in and doing s different things every day not really knowing where you're going not changing your weights not pushing yourself any harder like there's only so long you can do that before you lose interest like i was even trying to explain it and i was losing interest so going in with a plan and knowing exactly what you're doing and why you're doing it can make a huge difference and this is why you see so many people getting coaches because they do the classes they don't get the results they want because the classes are like a lot of places don't structure classes so you just do different things every day um now you're still getting a workout and you're still getting like exercise so it's not bad for you um where i work we do things a little bit differently we have a program for six weeks so you can see an improvement over the time and working on that you can see where you change your weights and how things become more comfortable so that to me is quite good in the class sense because it's a little bit more structured but there's nothing wrong with classes but if you have a certain goal the likelihood is unless you're going to a specific class for that exact thing like say for instance if you're going to pre or postpartum pregnancy yoga or um pilates you have a direct like it is specifically for that you're probably not going to get the results you want and the if you don't get the results you want you're going to give up whereas if you have a coach or you have a plan 
the way you're working for even like you don't even have to have the coach with you you can have an online coach which is really big now but they're doing the plan for you and they take that guesswork out for you and it's much easier to stay on plan or on track because you know okay today i'm gonna go this this and this these are my exercises for today great fab and if you don't get on so then the coach will be on to you going did you do them you know so you have that also like the accountability of them checking in on you to make sure everything's okay you can talk to them if you're worried about something if you're not sure you're doing something you can always talk to them they can help you there's so many different um benefits to having a coach that isn't just you're paying someone to tell you what to do and i think that's why so many people have coaches um obviously they are not 100 percent necessary if you've got a lot of training background and you know how to make your own plans you'd be perfectly fine if you can go to train yourself perfectly fine if you enjoy doing classes and stuff like that again perfectly fine but if it is something you are looking to help level up your training a bit you know or if you find that you're flitting and coming back in having a coach and having that accountability can be just make such a difference and really help you keep to basically keep on the straight and narrow or keep going and get the results that you've been looking for and they'll be there to you know when you have the wobbles and you think it should be happening quicker they'll be there to explain to you why it's not happening quicker and how much of you know like they can how much i was gonna say how much of an idiot you're doing you're being <laughs> uh probably shouldn't say that but you know what i mean like they're there to calm you down they're there to be you know someone to vent to they're there to be someone to keep you on track to make sure you're still doing your what you're supposed to be doing uh doing your plans and doing them properly and getting the best out of your training so you know it is worth looking into you know having a coach can be make the world a difference to your training it doesn't have to be me but you know if you do want to contact me about it you can find details of coaching with me on my website it's uh, chrissyhawkins.com and i think with that guys i am going to leave you there uh, i hope you found this helpful i found if you're struggling maybe you identified with a couple of these and you can kind of look at what you're doing and see how you can change that you know as i said even with the like coaching and not having a plan you can always look up youtube videos you can always look up you know workouts there's plenty of stuff online if you can figure out what you're kind of looking for it's very easy to find a lot of free stuff to get you going and at least that's something that you can come in with a plan going okay today i'm doing these exercises as opposed to going what am i going to do when i get there just another idea there's youtube out there if you do want to find me you'll find me on instagram and tiktok and my instagram is chrissy h fitness i also have a second horse related instagram which is strong in the saddle underscore and my tiktok is strong in the saddle and then as i said my website is www.chrissyhawkins.com and you can find out about coaching and stuff and everything there with me so i hope you enjoyed this episode and i will talk to you all next week I really do appreciate everybody who listens to this podcast. So if you please could help me with the algorithm and leave a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. And even, you know, if you want to reach out and suggest topics for me, I'd be delighted to hear from you. Drop me a DM on Instagram or TikTok. And thanks again for listening.